Hello, my name is Saud Rahman Ahmed. I'm presenting my trial on generative addressor networks for automatic polyp segmentation. And uh, I will give my presentation in four parts, starting with some introduction about GANs and conditional GANs, then discuss GANs for polyp segmentation and end with the results uh, and uh, some future remarks. I'm sure there is a big portion of people here worked with GAN already. However, it is relevant to say that GANs is a deep learning generative framework, which can produce realistic looking data. It uh, does that with the help of two submodels, a generator that takes a random noise vector and uh, uh, generates um, a data sample. And uh, a second submodel, which is a discriminator, which classifies that sample to be real or not, and it has access to the real data. Based on the discriminator output, both networks are updated in adversarial way, meaning that the discriminator aims to minimize an objective and the generator aims to maximize the same objective. Through training, the generator will be able to learn to produce good enough samples to fool the discriminator. GANs have many variations. One flavor of GAN is um, related to our problem is a conditional GAN, which tries to condition or control the produced output on some input instead of arbitrarily producing samples randomly. This conditional GAN has been successfully applied to a problem that is called image to image translation. For example, producing maps from aerial images or photos from edge sketches. Now, this sounds to be the exact problem we are trying to solve. Uh, now, we just want to map polyp images to masks, and it seems to be legit for us to see the polyp segmentation problem as an image to image translation task. For that, we utilize the same architecture proposed in this paper in the bottom of this slide. Describing the model, if we start with the discriminator D, it's a deep convolution neural network that performs image classification. It takes both the, po the polyp uh, image and the mask uh, as an input and predicts the likelihood of whether a uh, mask uh, is real or fake translation to that image. The generator is more complex and it's encoder uh, decoder model. It takes an image and generates a mask. Uh, it does this by first encoding the input image uh, down to a bottleneck layer, then a decoding, uh, then decoding the bottleneck representation to the size of the input image, to the output image of the uh, i.e. the mask. The skip connections are added between the encoding layers and the corresponding encoding and the corresponding encoding, decoding layer between the encoding layer and the corresponding decoding layer uh, forming a U-shape. Uh, we did a little preparation for data to fit the images uh, to the mean width and, and the height, padding smaller images to this by, by, with zeros and uh, cropping the larger ones. We normalize the pixels values uh, between minus one and one. And those Plots uh, show the generator and the discriminator losses or learning curves. And uh, for example, at epoch zero, the generator has a high loss value, uh, meaning a very bad looking mask that is easily detected by the discriminator on the right plot. Through time, our generator produces uh, better masks with uh, less loss and the discriminator struggles to detect them. We can see uh, the production progress of the masks in the figure uh, also from the left uh, from left to the right in terms of evaluation jacquard and uh, dice similarity coefficient shows how the, the produced masks intersect with the ground truth also we show the per pixel recall precision and uh, f2 uh, on the on the test set uh, visually the figure shows also some successful productions of uh, of the uh, on the top uh, two rows and also the model has uh, some failures as shown in the third row uh, to some extent, we can speculate that uh, the when there is a sharp edges around the polyp, uh, the model works uh, fairly well and fails uh, otherwise. Uh, sounds like we did not have very good performance, but also it's not bad. And also there is many pro improvement possibilities. One possibility 
is to increase, of course, the training set using the uh, data augmentation. We uh, know that deep learning methods are happy to have uh, uh, more training data. And also we can modify the objective function by adding reconstruction loss to the objective of the generator. And also we can try to mitigate, to mitigate the limited receptive field of the convolution layers by incorporating uh, attention mechanism. Will that help? I'm not sure. Thank you very much.